The chances are you've never seen this boy before, but you've seen many like him. His name is Harris, Johnny Harris, and he's in the seventh grade at District 2. Though Johnny himself is a stranger to you, the disease that made him a cripple is no stranger. It was poliomyelitis, a communicable disease. Cephalitis, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Ringworm, Infectious Diarrhea, Murine Typhus, Malaria, Influenza, Communicable Diseases. Where do they come from? And how do they spread? Many diseases, like tuberculosis, poliomyelitis, and influenza, survive in man and are spread from person to person. Some diseases spread by other means. Rats may carry typhus. Mice may cause bacillary dysentery. Mosquitoes bring malaria, dengue, encephalitis. Ticks bring Rocky Mountain fever, relapsing fever. Flies carry typhoid. Trachoma. Fleas carry bubonic plague. Some diseases spread from contaminated meat or food. Raw milk may cause diphtheria, undulant fever, polluted water, schistosomiasis, cholera. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people suffer from communicable diseases, and many die unnecessarily from preventable infections. Communicable diseases recognize no boundaries, for they've taken their toll of human life the world over. Their control may be a national problem, or it may be regional, involving several states, or it may be local. An epidemic might start anywhere and reach into many states. The classic example is the 1918 influenza pandemic, which was first recognized in Boston and within a month spread throughout the entire country. Today, always watchful for epidemics, practicing physicians constitute the first line of defense. But the responsibility for the prevention of communicable diseases is vested primarily in the state and local health departments, which are assisted upon request by the United States Public Health Service. The Communicable Disease Center, with its headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, serves the nation in field investigation, prevention, and control of communicable diseases. In cooperation with local health agencies all over the country, the Communicable Disease Center, better known as CDC, has established diagnostic laboratories, applied research projects, control operations, and field training centers. CDC employs a variety of professional specialists skilled in every aspect of communicable diseases. Medical epidemiologists, veterinary epidemiologists, public health nurses, laboratory technicians, parasitologists, entomologists, sanitary engineers, statisticians, training specialists, and many others who work together to solve the practical problems and get results in the fight against communicable diseases. It may be a problem concerning a section of the country where year in and year out its rivers rise to flood out whole towns and villages. The flood subsides leaving in its wake billions upon billions of mosquito larvae and the threat of malaria becomes obvious once more. 
scientific information on the subject is discussed and analyzed. Decisions are made, and one of these is to design more effective equipment to combat the dreaded mosquito. Ground equipment or air equipment, inexpensive to build, cheap to operate, but effective. And its effectiveness will depend on many factors, all very familiar to the engineering mind. The type of larvicide best suited to the problem and how many gallons per minute will the unit deliver? How large the nozzle? How wide the orifice? How much pressure for maximum effect? Field test. How well does it perform under actual conditions? Gallons per acre. Distribution. Width of the swath. Size of the droplets. So it's the job of CDC to develop experimentally procedures, materials, equipment, and to test them until their effectiveness is established beyond question. The proven techniques are then demonstrated to the state health authorities whose personnel are trained to carry out the programs. In common with medical organizations all over the world, CDC is trying to solve the riddle of poliomyelitis, which kills or paralyzes thousands of people every year. In the research laboratories, it has been found that where flies have access to the feces of infected persons, the presence of the virus of poliomyelitis can be demonstrated in the flies by injection into susceptible animals. But are flies an important and frequent mode of transmission? Would fly control reduce the incidence of poliomyelitis? We know now that flies do transmit another disease, which is a very real public health problem, dysentery. Today, CDC has organized with state and local health departments a nationwide fly control program to reduce the incidence of dysentery. Yet, at one time, flies were only suspected as carriers. It has since been demonstrated that clean flies exposed to a culture of dysentery organisms carried these germs in or on their bodies. If the fly remained on the culture for only a few seconds and was then placed on a sterile medium, the medium showed colonies of dysentery organisms after a period of incubation. It was found that the same sort of transfer occurred when flies went from feces to food. Because these scientific observations strongly indicated a probable relationship between dysentery and flies, the development of an experimental program was decided upon. In this case, it was undertaken jointly by the National Institutes of Health and CDC. As the first step in the program, epidemiologists selected an insanitary section of town a section that was known to have a high incidence of dysentery and where it was also known that there were many flies. Flies would be controlled in one half of the section, but not in the other. But to prove that flies were important carriers, it would have to be shown that the morbidity and mortality rates of the controlled area had been appreciably reduced. For this experimental control program, special tools and equipment were designed. populations were measured, identified, and collected for laboratory studies throughout the controlled and uncontrolled areas.
children from both areas were brought to the clinic. Rectal swabs were made so that bacteriologists could determine the prevalence of Shigella organisms. Epidemiologists determined the amounts of diarrheal morbidity by going from house to house through both areas, asking housewives if members of their families had experienced diarrhea in the last 30 days. Mortality figures were obtained from the county health officer. In the area to be controlled, inspections were made to find the fly breeding areas. breeding areas were brought under control by basic sanitation procedures. experimental program proved that dysentery could be reduced from one-third to one-half by fly control. When we knew that dysentery could be reduced by fly control, and the expenditure of public funds was justified, the next step was to demonstrate to the states the proven operational procedures and train their personnel in the application of these practices. Such arrangements are usually made through CDC regional representatives when requests for assistance come from state health officers. Sam, I wonder if you people could help us. We've got 10 counties in this state where the death and sickness from dysentery, especially babies, have always been higher than the rest of the state. Yeah, I know. Most of those counties are in the low income areas. No garbage disposal, bad sanitation. In fact, everything's bad. Yes. You know, we've always wanted to get some fly control going down there, but we just haven't had anybody that knows how to organize the program and uh, see that it's carried out. We don't have any equipment. Trucks, bulldozers, drag lines, sprayers. We can send you some big power sprayers, but we haven't the money for trucks and drag lines and things like that right now. We may be able to give you a little more help later on. In the meantime, uh, could, you, could you work out a deal with your highway department to use some of their heavy equipment? I think we ought to be able to work something out there. Now about that uh, training course in flight control in Atlanta next week. I can't spare any of my people uh, right now, and uh, it'll be a couple of months before I can get anybody to Atlanta. And we want to get this thing going. Since you're going to have a big program, it might be more economical to start the training program right here in your state. I'll see what I can do with the Atlanta people. Oh, that's fine, Sam. Now we've got some more training problems. 
What are we going to do about all of those technicians that require all those special courses? Now, you've just got to help me, that's all. So, CDC trained the personnel of this state on the proven methods of fly control and enabled them to set up their own program. Training is an important part of the CDC organization and covers such things as water supply, stream pollution, sewage, housing, laboratory procedures, sanitary engineering, mycotic diseases, and many others. Training centers are strategically located throughout the United States and are attended by state and local health personnel and students from many foreign countries. Audiovisual aids for training are planned and produced by CDC. All types of printed material are also available. Training at all levels is carried on in the diagnosis, prevention, and control of communicable diseases. CDC is one of the task forces of the Public Health Service, a reservoir of engineering, scientific, and medical knowledge, ready to help each state in its fight against communicable diseases. Today, as yesterday, the challenge continues, and opportunity is great for doctors, for nurses, for scientists, and for many others with the ambition and with the training to accept that challenge.